Hello, my name is David Daly. I'm a volunteer here in the Education Department at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum. I invite you to join me in a consideration of this impressive portrait of Queen Mary Tudor, the first woman monarch to rule England in her own right. Painted in 1554 by Dutch artist Antonis Moor using oil paint on an oak wood panel, this was an engagement present from Mary to her fiancé, Philip Habsburg, heir to the Kingdom of Spain. Before we focus on the painting, let's take a moment to orient ourselves. We're on the second floor of the museum in the Dutch room. The walls in here are upholstered in a beautiful pale green silk damask. The ceiling is wood, heavily carved and painted. The floor is squares of reddish brown ceramic tile, dark and shiny. The painting hangs in the northwest corner of the room above a very ornate love seat that resembles the chair Mary sits on in the painting. Not quite life-size, the portrait measures about five feet high by about four feet wide. The relatively simple gold frame consists of three bands of incised wood molding. Now, let's focus on this portrait of Mary Tudor, painted when she was 38 years old, getting ready for the marriage that would join two powerful empires. The immediate impression is of a rather fierce-looking woman, opulently dressed and bejeweled. Her pale face and hands contrast with the dark background of the painting. She sits bolt upright in a very large throne-like armchair covered in red and gold patterned damask. Although the chair seems to be quite plushly upholstered, Mary's ramrod posture doesn't allow her to sit back nor do her arms rest on the fringed arms of the chair. The portrait ends somewhere around where her knees would be, though they're well concealed under the full skirt of her dress. With a circular motif of leaves and vines in an overall pattern, the stiff-seeming brocade fabric of the dress is a light gray-blue and white on a dark gray background. This is no demure bride-to-be. Because the tonal quality of the background is so dark, Mary's pale-complexioned, oval-shaped face stands out. Her dark eyes peer directly at us under scant eyebrows. Her mouth is closed. Her thin lips betray no hint of a smile. She has a very high forehead and, like her Tudor relatives, dark red hair, that's pulled back tight behind her ears, mostly covered by a black and white flat velvet cap that sits atop her head. It's held in place at the back with a band of alternating ornaments of pearls and gold filigree. She is extremely elegantly attired. Over the grayish brocade dress, she wears an overgarment of rich brown velvet it fits tightly over the chest and arms, then flares over the skirt. The sleeves of the overgarment end at the elbows to reveal the gray brocade sleeves of the dress, ornamented with vertical stripes of off-white ribbon adorned with gold buttons. Ruffled lace cuffs extend over the wrists. Above the cuffs on both wrists are close-fitting bracelets of pearls and diamonds. The brown velvet overgarment has a stand-up collar faced with delicate white lace that flares out to frame Mary's face and to complement the ruffles of the high neck of her white blouse. In her right hand, she holds a red and white Tudor rose, a symbol of her family and also, traditionally, of love. In her left hand, she holds a pair of dark brown leathered gloves pearl and gold studded cuffs. She has rings on her index, fourth, and little fingers. Around her slim waist, Mary wears a finely wrought belt of gold and jewels from which hangs down a long dark colored cord. At the end of the cord is a large round gold and enamel container, which may be a pomander holding sweet smelling herbs and fragrances, 
Or maybe it's a reliquary, a religious object designed to hold a saint's relics. We don't really know which it is. I've saved her most spectacular ornament for last, the huge three-tiered diamond and pearl pendant that hangs from a necklace of large pearls that encircle her neck. This was Philip's gift to his betrothed. The pendant is in three parts, a smaller square diamond in a golden pearl setting, from which hangs a quite large square diamond in a gold setting, and from that hangs La Peregrina, the Wanderer, the largest pearl ever discovered, perfectly symmetrical, glowing, lustrous. Mary wears it confidently, proudly, as befits the queen she has become against great odds and at great personal cost. Sometime after 1554, some unknown person added the words, Mary, the queen, in light gray paint in the upper left corner of the painting. It seems quite unnecessary to identify this woman. Even if we didn't know her name, we'd know who she is. Strong-willed, rich, powerful, stubborn, a person who knows what she wants and will do what she deems necessary to get it. Her enemies didn't call her Bloody Mary for nothing. 